Okay, and welcome to the next installment of Student Dave. Today we're talking about the MATLAB implementation of the Bayesian Ninja hunting quail using the Kalman filter. Uh, now remember that the Ninja has got his bandana on backwards, so he can't see very well, and so he's noisily chasing the quail, and he wants to do it in an optimal way. So he's going to use the Kalman filter. And so here we're going to go through that. Make sure you watch the last video because we go into the details of how the equations and the terms play out. And so this is much less confusing if you see that video first. Okay, anyway, so let's start. So we first got to find our meta variables, that is how long and how often we're going to sample. So we'll say the duration is about maybe 10 seconds and the sampling is 0.1. That's how often the ninja updates his estimate. And then um, dt is equivalent to t, which you saw in the last video. So in this case, uh, we're now going to define our coefficient matrices. And we have a, b, and c. And remember that, uh, that as we defined it, a is 1, dt, 0, 1. And then the uh, control update, that was a state update. Now the control update is going to be dt squared, or t squared over 2, t. And then this is our measurement update uh, co uh, coefficient. Okay? Then we define our main variables. And so u, again, is our, our control input, which is the acceleration magnitude. Then we're going to define our states. Um, basically, it's the position of the quail, so we'll call that q. We'll start it at 0, 0, and set our estimate to start at the same position. Then we're going to define our noise magnitude, and basically, this is the process noise, the noise in the quail's acceleration. You know, the jet packs on the quail's arms are awesome, but they're not perfect, so there's going to be some error in them. But definitely, there's much more error in the estimate of the ninja. Basically, he's got those... Uh, He's got his you know, bandana on backwards, so he can't see it clearly, and we're going to set that to 10. Then we have to take the standard deviations and represent them as variances. And so these, the, because we just have one value for measurement, it's a simple just square it. Um, for the state estimate, remember, the acceleration has the noise, but we're talking about the position and the velocity, so we have to transform that. And so the effect of acceleration on the position and on the velocity are these two values up here. And so it's going to be dt squared over 2 squared, and the other one's dt squared. And we pull out the uh, quail acceleration noise magnitude squared so that we don't have to multiply each one of these four terms. And this just plays out if you do the math. It's very simple. Okay, so this is the coefficient um, update. And so we're going to just define as p. p is a typical symbolization for the, I'm sorry, not coefficient, covariance. And then uh, we're just going to initialize that to the initial state covariance. Then we're going to initialize some variables so we could see what exactly the ninja sees as time goes. So this is going to be the actual quail flight path. This is the actual quail velocity. And this is the quail path that the ninja sees. So this is the ninja's perception. And so let's just go ahead and plot this out. OK, so red is the actual flight of the quail. And the black is what the ninja continuously sees in time. As you can see, it's pretty noisy. Okay, so let's just show an example of, let's say the ninja was, wasn't uh, using the comma filter. He decided, I'm just going to take a moving average, you know, and just kind of estimate where we think the quail is based on a moving average. So let's plot what that looked like. And you can see that if you follow a moving average, which basically is just kind of summing in time, uh, just over some window, maybe like 20 points, you can see that it's pretty bad. And you'd have to actually sum over quite a bit before this started to really fit it. And that basically requires a lot of computation on the part of the ninja. And it's not a very good fit. So he would never catch the quail using this method. So this is a bad ninja. Okay, A better ninja will use the common filter because he can use more information. He knows how the quail is moving, the trajectory of the quail. right? With that knowledge, he can create a much better estimate than just blindly following his measurement data. So um, let's just define some variables. We have the quail position estimate, the quail velocity estimate, and then just reinitializing the initial state. And these are just for plotting purposes. What you're going to do with the common filter, as I described with the equations before, is that we're going to iterate through time, and we're going to do the, our updates. So our first update right, is the state update. It's a times the estimate, the prior, plus the control input. right? That's the acceleration. This is just for plotting later. Um, then we're going to update the covariance. Again, that's the prior covariance with the um, uh, state covariance measure that updates this. Then we're going to update our common gain. Again, that's in, uh, a function of the expected covariance of the measurement. Then we're going to update the state estimate. And this is basically the ultimate part of uh, after we got our prediction, we're going to combine in the correction term. So here's our prediction. And then here's the, the weighted version 
of the the corrected of the correction value. So this is the correction, and it's weighted by k by the information to get our estimate. And then we're going to update the covariance estimation. And I is basically an identity matrices. It's a two by two. And this is our update of the covariance estimation. OK, so this is literally straight from the equations we saw before in the last video. And so, so let's just run that and plot that. And as you can see, it's a really good fit. Uh, it looks almost identical. It's not. There's some little spots where you can see some errors and stuff like that. Um, it's almost perfect. And, and that's basically what the come on filter is. We're taking advantage, in this case, such a simple situation, but and we know explicitly the path of the quail. And so it's going to be a really good fit. That the measurement data is going to be, the noise isn't going to be able to contribute very much at all. But let's say we change this equation a little bit. Let's say that we're going to make our trust in our, our actual noise, our, our ninja's vision noise, like say he was able to correct his bandana uh, right in the middle of flight or at the very beginning. And let's say he predicts it very well, okay? But then let's say the, the quail's uh, perceived flight path is still very broad. So we're saying that the ninja's perception seems to be quite uh, very good, or at least he thinks it's very good. But we're going to actually say that the quail's flight appears still very random. And we'll see how that plays out. Let's just go ahead and do that all over again. Okay, so we plot out the what the ninja sees. So remember that the ninja sees this amount of variance, and we're saying that's actually the variance, but the ninja doesn't think that. The ninja thinks that there's a much, that his measurement is very accurate. And you can see we get some mistakes here. That whenever the measurement starts to go askew, like as these start to get high, it goes up. When they start to stay low, it kind of stays low. And basically it gets skewed, but it's still better than that moving average. So the idea is that um, w how you define your, your noise measurements and all your basically assumptions uh, can affect the way this fitting function looks. But for some, a lot of circumstances, it seems to do pretty well as long as the other parameters are correct. Let's try another example. Let's just bring this back to normal, back to 10, set this back to a normal. And then let's just say, though, that the uh, variance in the... Uh, the noise magnitude in the uh, process, that is in the acceleration of the quail, is, is huge. Let's say the jetpacks the quail bought were actually from like um, a horrible company and they basically, they're all over the place, they don't work so well. So let's just set this to two, pretty large value, and let's see how that plays out. Okay, so again, our, our measurement isn't off, acceleration's hard to see, and again, you see that uh, we start to skew because now we see these data, we see these data points moving all over the place the, in the black and we can't tell that's due in part to the quail um, actually changing position. And so this noise magnitude is uh, picked up and it shifts our estimate. So again, this is just another example of how your assumptions affect the way the fit works. But here it's still much better than a moving average because we're using a model that on most parts is pretty accurate. Now I'm just going to show you what the uh, distributions look like because that's what we were talking about in the very beginning videos. And so I'm just going to shrink all these things down so they're easily viewable. Let's just set this to 5 and we'll set this to like, I don't know, 0.5. Actually, let's set this to like 3. And we're not going to look at the plot so much. We just want to see the behavior of the uh, estimate. And I think that'll work pretty good. Let's just do this. Okay, we're going to see these data points one more time. And again, I made the uh, variances very small. Okay, and now let's just plot this last part. This is what I really want. Okay, so what we're going to look at here, let's just shrink that up. We're going to see our state prediction, our measurement, uh, uh, our, our variance in our measurement, and then our state estimate. That's a combination of the state prediction and the measurement. And then I'm not showing the, um, the correction term, but uh, it's, it's, it's just uh, kind of assumed into it. It's not as informative. And then the actual quail position is the blue line vertically. So we're going to see that the variance is going to kind of spread over time. And we'll zoom in on these in a second. But the point is, you can see, for example, the state prediction is pretty tight uh, because, remember, the, the error term isn't too broad. And uh, the measurement, however, is quite broad. And so the combination of the two is going to be heavily biased. And so the state estimate is going to be pretty close to the state prediction. And now notice it's not always perfect. And you can kind of see it moving around. But the idea is the same. This is basically you're combining these estimates and to create a new distribution, and then we're plotting the maximum value. Here it's a really nice fit. Okay, 
So that's the overall idea. Uh, this code is available and um, just play around with it. There's lots of things you could change. You could change, for example, the acceleration. Maybe the acceleration changes throughout time so you don't have this nice little curve. And you can see how all these variables interact because there's a lot of things going on at once. Okay, and um, in the future I'll be talking about things like Shannon information, Markov decision process, processes, and things like that. Okay, see ya.